Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Matt and Nava Asner. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. And welcome to a concert for the Ed Asner Family Center. Your presence here tonight is a testament to your deep commitment to changing the lives of those who need it most. And for that, we are truly grateful. Tonight, thank you. Go ahead. Tonight, we have gathered not only to revel in extraordinary music, but also to honor the unwavering dedication of some ex exceptional individuals and teams who have made this event a reality. And I hope you'll indulge me. First and foremost, a heartfelt thank you to the driving force behind this remarkable concert, my friend, the incredible Steve Lukather. Luke! Luke! Your unwavering commitment to the mission of the Ed Asner Family Center is nothing short of remarkable. We must also extend our gratitude to event producer Milo Nichols, who through his planning and execution has turned this dream into a reality. Alongside him, another vital producer, Steve Karras, has played an indispensable role in bringing this event to life. A big thank you to Trev Lukather. Behind the scenes, ensuring that everything runs like a well-oiled machine is Jack Albeck. Thank you, Jack. Ken Freeman, Steve Callas, who are running the audio, and Dick Schubert for providing the audio system on stage and sound consoles. Thank you. A special shout out goes to Chris Kissinger for his video services tonight and for adding some humor with his dad jokes. Oh, we got humor. We got humor. I got a little technical call, right, so we're Chris, not going right, to right. do the video, so go to the next part when you can. We owe an immense debt of gratitude to Niederlander, Rena Wasserman, Paul Geller, and the entire Niederlander team for their unwavering support and partnership. Thank you. The Orpheum Theater, owned by extraordinary Steve Needleman, has provided us with an exceptional venue to host this event. Thank you to Steve and to Christian Andrade. Our sponsors. We could not survive without your generous support. <clears throat> Guest Foundation, Dr. Doreen, Autism Network, Autism Live, and Ask Dr. Doreen. Thank you. <laughs> Dolby. Hi, Tom. Licorice Pizza. Manhead. Manhead donated all the merch to us tonight. Thank you, Manhead. <laughs> An Amazing Gallery. Thank you, Nick. Tito's Homemade Vodka. Very important. Ted Sarandos and Nicole Avant Foundation. Tascam. JBO by Harmon and Ma's Italian Kitchen. Thank you all also to uh, Mike Bagakis and Upstage Catering. Now, as we eagerly await the artists who will grace our stage tonight, Chris Tenney, Logan Shepard, Hooba Stank, Sean Temple Pilots, Colin Hay, Joe Bonamassa, Toto, am I forgetting anyone? And the legendary wow. Ringo Starr. Yeah. Your talent and generosity have already touched our hearts, and we are deeply honored to have you here with us. Really, thank you. Before I pass my microphone, or not my microphone, she has her own, uh, to my better half, I want to express my heartfelt gratitude. It's personal. A concert for the Ed Asner Family Center has been a dream of mine since the very beginning. This is really special. 
and thanks to Steve Lukather and all of you. This is the best birthday present I've ever received. Yeah. Thank you all. Good evening, everyone. I'm Nava Pasquitasner, the co-founder of the Ed Asner Family Center. Tonight, I stand before you with a heart full of gratitude for your unwavering support. My husband Matt and I embarked on this journey inspired by our own three autistic sons. We understand the profound need for a place where families like ours could come together and find a sense of belonging and thrive. One of those families very, very dear to our hearts is the Lukather family. Steve Lukather and his beautiful son Bodhi have found solace and growth through our expressive arts classes and remarkable summer camps. Their story is just one of the many that inspire us every single day. But tonight, let's remember why we're here. This concert is not just a celebration of music. It's a fundraiser. And your contributions this evening will directly impact our ability to provide affordable mental health care and offer scholarships to families in need. Your generosity tonight fuels our mission to make a meaningful difference in the lives of individuals with special needs and their families. Thank you again for everything you do for this cause and for being a part of our journey and for joining us in making the world a more inclusive place. Throughout this evening, please consider, consider texting to donate, explore our incredible merchandise drop, and participating in our amazing online gallery auction. Every action, every contribution tonight counts. And together we can continue to be a beacon of hope for families of special needs individuals. Thank you so much. Thank you all for coming tonight. share the stage with such musical legends. <laughs> Let's make some noise and pretend it's a rock show, all right, LA? Let's do this. Yeah. I don't want you
I just kind of want to get this over with so I can become one of you guys, just fan, like totally fan going on and watch the rest of the show. But we're going to do a couple more. And uh, we don't usually do this. In fact, I don't know if, if we ever have done this. Uh, bring out some, uh, some buddies here to uh, help us out for the last two. Mr. Trevor Luther over here. Mr. Steve Major over there. Mr. Thank you uh, once again for being here. Thank you uh, once again for being here uh, to enjoy some uh, some music, but mostly for a great cause. Thank you. Um, thanks for inviting us, Trevor. Thank you. It's an honor. Thank you. So and it's quite an eclectic uh, array of bands tonight. So. I'm not expecting much as far as people coming in here going, oh dude, I'm a huge Ubisoft fan. I'm thinking more of a turn on and Seth fan. But if if you happen to uh, to know the band, this might be the song you know, alright? So do me a favor. Let's look I know we used to do the, the lighter thing, but everybody here's got a phone, right? All right, break him out. 
turn on the, the, the flashlights. Nope. Turn them on. Come on, you guys. Okay. We're having really fun tonight. Everybody. Okay. Let's show me a few thousand phones, all right? Keep them up. Keep them up. We got the old school. Except for this OG guy right here who's got the one. I just wanted it's about that. Kill that one. There we go. Let's do this together, LA. I mean, we're a bunch of LA kids here. Let's do this. introduce someone whose voice has been a soundtrack to many of our lives. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for the legendary Colin Hay. Uh, 
Mr. Colin here, or if you're in West Hollywood, it's Colin. Hey. Uh. Uh. I like to have instruments on the stage, but only one musician. <laughs> Makes me feel secure without the aggravation. Uh. This is the fabulous Mr. Jeff Badko on keyboards. Here, so. I'm very pleased to be here. I'll, I'll sing you a song. I'll sing you a couple of songs. This first song has got the lyrics, uh, Ghosts Appear and Fade Away in it. I was very happy when I came up with those lyrics. I thought they were quite good. And you think that people are paying attention to lyrics, but of course they're not. About 17 or 18 years after the song came out, a man came up to me and he, just before I went on stage and he put his hands on my chest and he said, Hey, are you going to play that song about the guards, mate? I said, What? He said, You've got a song about guards, haven't you? He said, Yeah, said, yeah mate, guards appear and fade away. So far. You know, 17 or 18 years, he thought that the song was saying goats appeared to fade away. And that was fine by him. He never, he didn't thought that was fucking weird, you know. Uh. Fade away. 
was a teleprompter here in front of me with nothing on it. <laughs> I'm going to sing that song now. It's called Waiting for My Real Life to Begin. That some people seem to seem to quite like. As a matter of fact, people, a lot of people get married to it. I know that because they write to me. They say, Dear Mr. Hay, we're getting married on the weekend to your song, Hank, My Real Life to Begin. Which, to be honest with you, strikes me as a bit of an odd choice. Ah. <laughs> I often wish I could see those people a few years, a few years into the marriage. You see, that? Ah. Drink, tune my guitar. I used to have guys that would hand me finely tuned guitars between songs. That's the first thing that goes. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff doesn't know this song. <laughs> it's okay, it's only got three chords on. <laughs> Any minute now, <laughs> a ship is coming in.
to do. And whenever I do that, I think to myself, oh, it's nice to be home. Generation 
but have also transcended it. I am about to introduce a band that needs no introduction, but I'm going to do it anyway. With hits that have stood the test of time from the wild rains of Africa. To the radiant Rosanna. They've encapsulated moments we hold dear, and I am honored to bring to the stage a man whose legacy is as timeless as their music. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Toto! in the making and uh, the reason why I am here and the band's here and all these beautiful incredible musicians they're my friends they came here to do this for the wonderful cause that we're here for the Anasmus Center. My, I have a 12 year old son who's autistic and it's become a really important part of my life and I met Matt Asner because he has three autistic kids and I knew his dad Ed who worked with my father behind the camera my dad was and this became really important and put this thing together having all the unbelievable musicians and artists and, the, and all of my crew and my friends uh, Dirk Schubert and all the cats from Schubert Systems all the guys in my crew if I start naming everybody I'm gonna fucking either forget somebody or I'm gonna be three hours I want to thank each and every one of the men and women who are on, that you don't see here that worked for weeks to make this thing happen all for free every penny is going to the cause I'm picking up the production cost and every penny you guys put in there is going to the set, okay? So this isn't some big part of only five bucks to you know, uh, some of these things can get a little weird. This is from the heart, and thank you for the warm welcome. I and mean, how about who was there? Colin Hayden. Colin Hayden, my Who was there, guys? Are fantastic, and there's so much more great music to come, and all these guys are my friends. God bless you all for taking the time to come out here. There's a few empty seats, and you know why? Because people I know bought tickets overseas to support the cause and said, look, we can't be there, but we sent the money in. So, they're here in spirit. You guys are here, are you ready?
Check this kid out, he's the real deal.
gentlemen, now introducing Jake Flynn and John Toposh from the Office of Council Member Bob Blumenfield. Hello. Hello. We got that wrong. We're STP. Uh, thank you. Thank you for that. Again, uh, John Popash, Jake Flynn, we work for Council Member Bob Blumenfield, who represents the West. <laughs> nice. We're, we're used to that. Usually we have constituents booing us. We're, we're from the West San Fernando Valley. How many of you people know where the West San Fernando Valley is? Uh, how many of you live in the West San Fernando Valley? All right. Well, the reason we're here is because the Ed Asner Family Center is in the West San Fernando Valley. And we're proud for the work that we do on behalf of Council Member Blumenfield for many years now to help represent an underserved community, especially the neurodivergent community. It is not an easy thing for what Matt and Nava are doing, and we really thank all the people, all of you here helping to bring to light and to help raise funds for what they're doing. We're very proud of that, and we want to do whatever we can to continue to help them and help an underserved community. They go largely unseen in the Reseda community in the West Valley, and we want to bring more light to them. That's part of our job, and we're just honored to be here. I'm going to pass it to my friend Jake because there's something that he wants to present. Something that we like to do on Team Bloomingfield to celebrate people and organizations that truly do incredible work in our community. So, Councilmember Bloomingfield took the, the correct official steps to declare September 9th the Ed Asner Family Center Day. doing on behalf of the neurodivergent community and we're honored to be here thank you very much thank you now we're going to do a hall and oats cover tribute <laughs> dean DeLeo, robert DeLeo, eric kretz and jeff goon let's hear it for stone <laughs>
guys are amazing. Thank you so much. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much. I hope you stick around with some Ringo guy or something. I don't know what's, I don't know what's up with this guy. Seems like a cool guy though. <laughs> Starkey backstage, which was so good to see him. One of the most amazing people 
and musicians. And uh, speaking of incredible musicians, the next gentleman that I'm going to introduce you to is playing. You know, I, I met about 25 years ago. At this point, I was already working at MTV, and uh, I, was, I was in New York City, and uh, I got an opportunity to hear this amazing artist who, who played blues. Uh, and, I, and I fell in love with them, and I got the opportunity. They said to me, hey man, would you want to do the voiceover for his EPK, his electronic press kit is what they call it. Right now, people would it'd be like something on social media, right? But it was such an incredible opportunity, and I, I remember doing that for Joe, and, and then it's meeting up, and just all through the years, loving the fact that not only is he just such an amazing musician, an amazing person who marches to his own drummer, loves what he loves, plays the way he plays, sings the way he sings, and he's just been really amazing. And did you know that he has 26 number one blues albums on the Billboard charts? Let's think about it. He holds the record for the most blues albums to hit number one, which is amazing. He's done so many great things, and he's performed with people that he loves, the Paul Rogers of the world, and I, I, I can go on and on. But I do want to say that I'm so excited to see him play tonight with the guys. I'm so glad he decided to come down. So I want you to give a warm welcome to the incredible Joe Bonamassa. Thank you for having me. Thank you. 
you come over there. <laughs> yeah! Kick it in, Luke.
Carl Silver, and Scott bless you, man. Really. Thanks to everybody up here, man. Love you all. Thank you. Matt Nama Esner, thank you very much. Niederlander, thank you very much. My, my staff, everybody, man, the band and crew, God bless. Thank you for everything. brightens our day when he visits the Ed Asner Family Center. He was diagnosed as autistic at three, and as an adult, he found his place in acting and comedy. He can be, see, he can be seen in a myriad of pro projects on television and in the movies. He has performed as comedian throughout Los Angeles and abroad, including the comedy store on the Sunset Strip. He's an amazing guy. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Christopher Tennant. Christopher Tennant. Hey, uh, <laughs> hi, hello. Uh, yeah. uh, good evening, my name is uh, Chris Tenney and I was diagnosed as a high-functioning autistic at age three and a half. And at age six, I was diagnosed with optic rectilitis, which basically means I have a crappy outlook about the whole thing. <laughs> uh. Yeah, and it's for a damn good reason. I have a disability, but I don't get the cool parking space. <sighs> See, I don't have the cool parking space. So, uh, oh, wow, yeah, I, I'm, I'm having a bit of an autistic moment here, folks. Uh, give me one moment. Uh, let's see, what do we got here? Uh, Oh, we can't do that one. Ah, <laughs> oh, here we are. Now, uh, for those of you who don't know what autism is, if you've ever seen the film Rain Man, Dustin Hoffman plays someone on the lower end of the spectrum. Yeah. Now, uh, his character was a savant, and not all of us are savants, so please, don't throw a bunch of your straws up here and ask me to count them, okay? <laughs> Thanks, much appreciated. Yeah. Now, uh... I, I, I acknowledge that uh, a lot of us are savants, you know, excelling in science or music or mathematics. <sighs> yeah, they are, not me. <laughs> Which is why I have to do this crap for a living. <laughs> That's right, folks. I am a failure at being autistic. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I'm not bitter. I'm not. I just happen to think that God may have made me near the end of the week. <laughs> On an off day, when he was bored with brilliant minds, muscular torsos, and huge genitals. <laughs> Oh, sure, you can laugh. <laughs> okay, I'm having another autistic moment here, folks. This is not my night. Let's see, uh... Thanks! <laughs> now, uh... Alright. Well, not a lot was actually known about autism when I was diagnosed all those years ago. I'd probably be diagnosed with a lesser Asperger's if I were tested today. Ugh, Asperger's. <laughs> Sounds like a lunch special at the Moonlight Bunny Ranch, doesn't it? <sighs> Great. Yeah, look, I don't have enough problems. Now I gotta be an Asperger too? What a pain in the buns. Besides, I got bigger problems, like sarcasm. I do not get it. 
whenever they saw a pretty girl in high school, I'd walk over and fart in her face. <laughs> Why? Well, simply put, because when I farted in front of my sister, she said, oh, that's attractive. <laughs> Yeah, turns out not so much. I uh, went to a special needs high school, big surprise there, and believe it or not, we actually had a basketball team. Of course, uh, none of the other teams in our division were special needs, so we had to really dig deep and play extra hard to achieve any kind of soul-crushing defeat. <laughs> One of the closest games we ever had was with the Jewish Community Center. <laughs> the yarmulkes kept falling off their heads, so they... <laughs> yeah... You see where this is going. Yeah, they, they had to very literally drop the ball in order to pick them back up. Oy vey, what a long game that was. And we would have kicked their asses too if we could have just kept the ball and played till sundown. <laughs> there, uh, there weren't a lot of dating options in my high school either. You know, because also some of my boys born and girls by an average of uh, four to one. So that means even though I'm 33, I've, you know, I've never had a girlfriend. I've never been on a date. Never even kissed a girl, you know, except for my mom and sister, but they don't count because they use way too much time. <laughs> yeah. My mom and sister hate that joke. <laughs> now, uh... <laughs> exactly, it always kills. Now, uh... I basically resigned myself to the fact that I may never fall in love and get married. Sad, I know, but hey, there is a bright side to this. Yeah. I, yeah. I really enjoy being able to have my own opinion. Yeah. My mom's not a fan of that joke either. My dad, however, thinks it's hysterical. Well, my name is Chris Tenney. You've been a great audience. But now, it is time for me to get off the stage so that we may all endeavor to rock out. So, please give a big hand for Hoobastank. The goal of the Academy is to inspire and promote confidence, independence, and fitness. And we cannot forget about the dating spectrum and relationship course help young adults navigate the dating world. I met my boyfriend there, and here's a little bit of video about our programs. I'm with Matt Damon! <laughs> Just kidding. Heavy heads, Matt Pinfield! Hey, Woo! Hey, buddy. Hey, 
everybody enjoying the show so far tonight. Everyone's having a great time. It's an honor to be here with you at the Astro Family Center. I'm so happy to be here. How's, the music's been great so far, hasn't it? I'm really excited to introduce this next band to you. A long history with the band. Goes back to 1992. And um, it's kind of crazy. At that period of time, you know, the band formed in Southern California, but I was running a radio station in uh, New Jersey, on the Jersey Shore. And, uh, it was called WHCG, and we actually did go up a dirt driveway to this house to get to it. Um, yes, it was one of the first 13 alternative rock stations in the country, but it was, uh, one day, uh, I was there working, getting ready to go in the air, and this truck pulls up, this delivery truck, and it's the guitarist from this next band you're gonna see. And at the time, we knew each other from the music scene on the Jersey Shore, right? But I hadn't seen him in a while because the band started on the West Coast. And he got out of the car and he said, uh, Hey Matt, you remember me, man? It's Dean. I, uh, from the music scene down there? And I said, Oh yeah, what's going on? He goes, Well, our band just got signed to Atlantic Records. And we got this new album coming out in about a week called Core. And it was really... <laughs> and... It was still when you knew you bought a CD and it was in a cardboard long box and the plastic was over it and you spent 10 minutes trying to get it off. So he had one copy of it. And I was a PD at the station and I was doing afternoons. So he said, uh, do you mind playing it? I said, come on in, yeah, we'll play, we'll play a bunch of it. So he came in, Dean and I sat there on the radio and uh, we played the three songs off that record. Uh, I remember Sex Type Thing, Wicked Garden, and Plush. And, um, and it was wild well because this is how great those guys are. You know, a year later, Plush was the biggest song of the summer all over the country. And we were in a small radio station here. And Dean came all the way back to see me when they were on the road at that period of time. That's what good people this band is. What do you think of that? We've had this amazing friendship and relationship ever since then. You know, I was there for many of your album specials, helping uh, you know premiere them. Uh, and this band is incredible. You know, they've had six number one rock singles, <laughs> many top ten albums, two that went straight into number one on the Billboard Top 200, and they sold 40 million records worldwide. <laughs> and for all of that. They are amazing people. I love these guys and we love their music. So, without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to Dean DeLeo, Robert DeLeo, Eric Kretz, and Jeff Goon. Let's hear it for Stone. Time. 